Well, good morning, everyone, and uh, it's great to have you with us. We begin with the call to worship. Christ is risen, alleluia. He is risen indeed, alleluia. Uh, let's come before God with prayer. Let us pray. Living Christ, with joy we lift our hearts to you to celebrate your risen life among us. We come gathered on this electronic medium, connected yet scattered, not conscious that we are joined by your love to you and to one another and to Christians around the world and through the ages. May your love be especially real to us as we gather this morning. May we know you as shepherd. May we find in you comfort and refuge, guidance and leadership, strength and safety, refreshment and renewal. May we see in you how richly our lives are blessed. May we see our cup overflow. May we know the anointing of your love. As we gather for worship this day, risen Jesus, shepherd of the sheep, who laid down your life for us, be with us, we pray, in your name. Amen. So uh, we come to our announcements this morning, and uh, we've we've had the announcements loop going. Uh, are there is there anybody who has a particular announcement they wanted to share with everyone? Uh, if you can raise your hand, Susan should be able to find it, find you, and then uh, you can then we'll unmute you, or you can unmute yourself. I see something turning up on the chat. <laughs> okay, no worries. Uh, so, um, oh yes, so uh, for those who are part of Book Group, um, the, uh, the books are purchased and available um, from the manse. Um, uh, if you need a book dropped off, uh, send send me or Susan a message, and we'll get uh, we'll get the book to you. Um, at least that's the plan. Yes, no, it is. Not, it's not just the plan; it's actually going to happen. Okay, so uh, we come now to uh, the time with the young and the young at heart, and we're going to have another lost sheep story uh, because today is Shepherd Sunday. Um, the fourth Sunday of Easter is usually Shepherd Sunday, so we usually have the 23rd Psalm. Don't worry, I have recorded that one properly. Uh, and um, we, also, uh, we also hear and explore the image of Jesus as shepherd or God as shepherd. Um, so, yes, that's what we're going to do now. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. Don't you love the frog? He restores my soul. Mm. All right. So uh, now, so now the other thing that I wanted to talk about just briefly with shepherds um, was yes, we got an image of the shepherd. Uh, and, uh, and the sheep, and we got that kind of green grass thing happening. Um, and there's maybe the shepherd, an adult, taking a large bunch of sheep um, around the place. Um, but in Jesus' time, and in indeed Palestine, uh, Israel, Jordan, um, today, uh, Bedouin, uh, Bedouin people take take sheep around, and uh, this is more kind of what it looks like. Uh, so this is uh, th these, this is a Bedouin shepherd in um, in Palestine near Bethlehem, in fact. So uh, yes, 
I, I, I don't think I don't expect you to recognize it, Georgette. Uh, but um, if you have a, a look at the, the shepherd there, he's not very not, not exactly old. I don't see a beard on him or anything like that. Um, so children were often shepherds too. So it's worth remembering um, for those who are children and those who are not um, that children can be uh, just as much shepherds in the mold of the good shepherd Jesus as anyone. So there we go. We're going to sing now, and we're going to sing The Lord's My Shepherd. Right. Sorry about that, folks. I had my uh, mic switched off. Um, so yes, uh, Angeline, uh, I hand over to you for the um, for the readings. Uh, 
Teach us wisdom, O God. Let, Let your words bring us light. light. The first reading is from 1 Peter, chapter 2, verses 19 to 25. For it is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse, and when he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that, free from sins, we might live for righteousness by his wounds you have been healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The Gospel reading is from John, chapter 10, verses 1 to 10. Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Open our eyes, O God, to the beauty of your word. May our lips and our lives unite to serve you. Thank you very much, Angeline. This morning's reading. Uh, now, let's see, will I be brave enough to stop staring my screen? Yeah, why not? And that's good. It means I can see everybody too. This morning's reading, uh, or readings rather, centre around the shepherd. And yes, we, uh, we, we're used to that shepherd image, even if we don't entirely understand it or don't entirely find it helpful. Um, living as we do in urban Australia uh, and in a time when shepherding is uh, really not something, or shepherding is actually something we associate with AFL. Um, for those who, uh, who used to play uh, AFL or continue to play AFL, we, um, we don't necessarily uh, get the imagery, or if we do, 
it's somehow distant from us. And so it's, uh, so even though Psalm 23 is one of the most beloved Psalms uh, in the Bible, if not the, one of the most beloved pieces of scripture, we don't necessarily find that the, uh, that the imagery of it connects as strongly to us as we might like. When Jesus speaks of himself as the shepherd, particularly in John's gospel, he's making fairly strong uh, reference to that psalm. Uh, it wasn't simply, it's not simply a psalm that's become popular since Christianity. Uh, it was a psalm of David's that was well known uh, throughout, the, throughout the ancient world and particularly, particularly uh, fa a favorite of those um, of the Jewish people. So Jesus knows what he's doing when he talks about himself as the good shepherd and knows who he's connecting himself to. He's connecting himself, obviously, to the shepherd that David, King David refers to in the psalm. But he's also referring to the... Um, he's, he's, it's also, he's also referring to the, uh, to, to, uh, to the opposite image, if you like. Um, and so when he talks about the, the thieves and the... the the, 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 sorry, the brigand or the, uh, um, the one who's trying to do the wrong thing, coming in, except, uh, you know, coming over the fence or whatever else, uh, he's, he's trying to say that there are others who may not have as clear, as clear or as pure an intention as Jesus in trying to call the sheep. There's... When we, when we hear Jesus referring to himself in this way, we, we tend to think of Jesus only as the shepherd. But there's another uh, interesting thought that uh, I was hearing this week. Um, and that is that when we listen to Psalm 23, yes, we hear of Jesus the shepherd, the one who, uh, who is the guard and the guide, guard, guardian and the guide, the one who is the, um, is the, is the provider of, of the clear waters and the um, and the good food, but we think when we uh, when we think of Easter, we remember that there was a crucifixion that led to Easter. And whilst in Mark's gospel, particularly, but also in the other synoptic gospels, we hear Jesus quoting the words of Psalm twenty-two: "My God, My God, why have you abandoned?" What if, what if Jesus, in fact, had been speaking in the Garden of Gethsemane in the lead up, those words, the Lord's my shepherd shall not want? What if in facing the, the time of trial and of, uh, of, of his uh, torment and execution, Jesus actually had those words as well in his, life, in his, in his mind or on his lips? The Lord's my shepherd, I shall not want. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. It's quite probable the early church um, associated this idea of Jesus praying that, uh, praying that psalm, and it's, it's a prayer as much as it is a, a song. Jesus praying that psalm as he went through his time of trial. In the reading from First Peter this morning, um, the the apostle calls on us to on, on people who are, are suffering to do to bear it with with gladness or to bear it with fortitude, just because because Jesus did that too. That this is part of following the shepherd. When uh, now I I know uh, that the rest of us that, that we might have some trouble with some of the the concepts here. Um, for instance, uh, First Peter talks about um, slaves uh, obeying uh, their masters and not worrying too much about whether or not their masters uh, mistreat them. Um, and well, yes, I much I'd much rather Peter had said slaves rise up against your masters and let's transform the whole system and revolutionize the planet. But that's actually not what Peter did or said. 
um, in no small part because slavery was uh, the bedrock of the society um, and, uh, and the, uh, the source of much of the prosperity and wealth of, uh, of, of the society. So, um, and, and it was taken for granted. Um, if you, debt slavery was uh, a, a very common thing. Um, and so in some ways, uh, it, it's, it's too much to expect of the early church to have advocated the release, the freedom of all slaves. But we do get hints, even in that early time, and even when this, this context suggested that slavery was, uh, you know, the, the way that everything just happened, um, we get even, even there, we get sense, the sense that Jesus, the, the, sorry, that Jesus' disciples wanted slavery not to be an oppressive condition, but rather a free one. Indeed, later in, in Peter, um, we, we get this uh, idea that we are slaves of Christ. Um, and uh, that as Christians, we are, we are the slaves of, of Christ. So that, but in that slavery, we are, we are utterly free. Um, and so this concept of, uh, of slavery being, of, of embracing the freedom, embracing free, freedom within slavery um, is, is also being fed through into these verses where we hear about um, slaves obeying masters or, or putting up with um, mistreatment. I suppose that you could even say that uh, you know, this is a part of loving your enemy, um, where if your master mistreats you, if your uh, owners, owners uh, mistreat you, if you're abused, then that's, uh, that's kind of loving the enemy. We do have to be careful uh, because these sorts of passages have been terribly misused by people through the ages to either justify abuse or to silence the abused, um, particularly those who are uh, powerless. So we need to balance both that, balance that sense of the Christian identity being um, one where we accept suffering because Christ accepted suffering, and at the same time, uh, standing up on behalf of those who are abused in the name of the one who seeks to end all abuse uh, and the one who proclaimed a kingdom of love, of justice and of peace. And the one who, told, who, who, who died rather than use violence. So on this Shepherd Sunday, uh, as we prepare to share in the, um, in the sacrament of communion, and as we share the peace with one another, and uh, it's going to be interesting, we'll, uh, we are called to be those people of peace, um, to both endure the suffering that is not deserved and to advocate for those who are suffering because, that's what, because the shepherd wants to lead all people to, to still waters, to green pastures, to places of peace. Let's go, uh, go back to our service here. Now, uh, I want to share my screen again. We, um, we come to our prayers of, so we come to our offering first. Now, um, Angeline, I, don't, I didn't um, check with you about this beforehand, whether or not you had a dedication prayer for the offering. You can, yes, you do. Fantastic. In that case, would you be so kind as to dedicate the offering that uh, has been brought over the last week and, and before? Thanks. Good shepherds, we give thanks for the gifts granted to our flock. May these gifts be used for the betterment of the spiritual journey of our community. In the name of Christ. Amen.
Amen. All right. Well, Angeline, I'll uh, ask you to continue by um, bringing to us our our prayers of the people. Now, um, do you want to share your screen, or do you want to uh, do you want me to share the prayer online? Um, I can put the prayer in the chat um, because also the um, it, it puts in the locations that have the sung response. If that's uh, yep. still happening as well, yes, yeah. it is. Great. I'll, I'll put uh, my prayer in the Zoom chat for everybody to follow along with. Alrighty. Thanks very much, Angeline. When you when you're ready, on you go. I don't think I can actually. Can is it I? too long? Oh, okay, too long. Um, to go that. So um, it's a bit long to put in the chat, so I'll put it in paragraphs. One second, sorry, everybody. Yep, I see it now up on the. Oh, okay, now I'll need to put it on the. If I put it on the chat for everyone, I, if I put my chat up. Oh, please share it. Or if I stop sharing and Susan, you share your chat screen, I don't know. Okay. There we go. All right. Um, on you go, Angeline. I think we'll... We come to the prayers of the people. Heavenly Father, we come to you as sheep looking for our loving shepherd. In these uncertain and unusual times, it is comforting to know that we can look to you for peace and strength. As we go about our daily lives, thank you for giving us the knowledge that you walk with us and that the power of your Holy Spirit enriches us on every step of our journey. Come, Holy Spirit, come. <laughs> Creator Shepherd, we give you thanks for the beautiful world you have created for us. Perhaps it is unusual to look out at your world through our windows. Perhaps it feels limiting to experience your creation while confined to our tiny corners of your earth. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to remember that every part of your creation is significant and awe-inspiring, even the local gardens and walkways that we sometimes take for granted. We give thanks for the hardiness of our native flora and for the ingenuity of our native fauna. We rejoice in the refreshing rains, so nourishing after a time of fire and heat. We inhale the renewed clarity of the air and the atmosphere and recognize our own role in caring for our landscape as custodians of your creation. We ask that you walk with us in your creation, Lord, and open ourselves to channel the care and blessings of the Holy Spirit back into the world around us. Come home. <laughs> Guiding shepherds, this is a time of great fear and uncertainty. As people, it can sometimes be difficult to navigate our lives when we do not understand the nature of the challenges that we face. The unknowable nature of the world can be confronting and can challenge us as we grapple with the fact that we cannot know everything and cannot control everything. Heavenly Father, we realize that these circumstances can affect our leaders who are burdened with the task of advocating for their nations in a time when they may be terrified and angry. 
Lord, may your Holy Spirit support and bolster our leaders to make the right decision for our future without succumbing to the temptation of short-term gain. And we ask that we may support our leaders with the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we, we may have both the courage to speak and the grace to listen and understand. Healing Shepherd, we pray for those who are unwell at this time. We ask that you support and heal them and their families and provide comfort for those who need it most. Heavenly Father, we pray for the essential workers who support this community at risk to themselves, for the physicians, the nurses, the teachers, the emergency service workers and allied health workers, the shop attendants, the carers, and so many more. We ask that you give us the strength to continue to care for the sick and the dying, those who come to us at their most vulnerable and to serve with compassion and love. And when we care for those whom we can't save, give us the grace to remember our own limitations as humans and to support the last journey of our brothers and sisters with dignity and respect. Heavenly Father, we ask that you encircle us with your protective spirit, that we may continue to serve in your name. Comforting Shepherd, this is a time of trial that may be spiritually taxing for us and the people of this world. We pray for those who are in countries where self-isolation is a luxury, where people live in fear of illness. We pray and grieve for the families of the police officers who lost their lives last week. We remember those who have lost their jobs in this uncertain time, those who are financially struggling, and those who carry the burden of making difficult decisions at an impossible time. We grieve that sometimes words cannot express our sorrow and pray that we continue to share our love through our actions. We give thanks for this church community where we find mutual and love and connection with each other. We give thanks for our ministers, James and Corrie, as they guide and support our community through these difficult times. We give thanks for the church musicians as their music helps us to transcend the boundaries between physical and spiritual worlds in our expression of our faith. This week, we particularly give thanks for Helen McGeorge, whose dedication to our community and unwavering kindness brings light and hope to those around her. We keep Helen's family in our hearts, particularly as they grieve the loss of Kate's husband, John. Heavenly Father, just as the sheep know to trust in their shepherd, so too do we know that we can bring the innermost thoughts of our hearts to you. In a moment of silence, we bring those thoughts to you now. Life-giving shepherd, we look to you at this time to help us to live the lives you have given to us to the utmost. Grant us the confidence to learn from times of struggle and adversity. Grant us the patience to work within shifting frameworks and times where our individual freedoms must be curtailed for the well-being of our global community. Grant us the grace to accept that life can change and that we travel together through these changes as a community in your light. And grant us peace 
in the knowledge of your perfect love and our mission to show our love for you and for our neighbors. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, thank you, Angeline, for those wonderful prayers. We come now to the peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And uh, yes, can we? I'm going to uh, just stop sharing the screen for a moment. Uh, sorry. And uh, so we'll, we'll be able to see one another a bit better uh, and to wave a sign of peace to those around us. That's the way. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Um, and I'll let you all unmute yourselves in a bit uh, and we'll, we can have a bit of, uh, bit of a chat after, after our worship service is finished. Um, but uh, for now, yes, good to, uh, good to see so many people here. It's lovely. All right. Um, so I'm going to move to the communion table. Oh, actually, no, we're going to have our hymn, our hymn first. Um, and our hymn is Be Known to Us in Breaking Bread. Here we go. <laughs> There may be a bit more lag than usual uh, with this method of controlling things. So I've got the iPad to, uh, to shift things across. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessing and honour, glory and power are rightly yours, all gracious God. By your creative word, you brought the world to birth. In your generous love, you made the human family, that we might see your glory and live forever in your presence. We say together, 
Blessing and honor, glory and power are rightly yours, our all gracious God. When we wandered away from you in our sin, you sought us with your steadfast love and did not give us up. In the fullness of time, you sent your Son to be our Savior and Deliverer. Made of flesh and blood, he lived our life and died our death upon the cross. Death could not hold him, and now he reigns at your right hand. Blessing and honor, glory and power are rightly yours, all gracious God. When we wandered away from you in our sin, You sought us with your patient and steadfast love. And it looks, uh, uh, sorry, it's just, I've got the same verse again. Try that again. Therefore, with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven, we praise your great and glorious name, saying, Holy. It's not up. I think we all know the words to this bit. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed indeed is the Lord Jesus Christ, who at supper with his friends took bread and gave you thanks, broke it and gave it to them and said, Take and eat all of you. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup and gave thanks, gave it to them and said, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Therefore, Father, as we celebrate this, we celebrate this Passover of gladness. For as in Adam all die, so even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Accept through Christ our great high priest. This our sacrifice of praise. Send your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and wine, whether they be here or in our homes, so that they may be for us the body and blood of Christ, joining us with one another and with you in communion of holy, uh, in holy communion. Gather us who share the feast into the kingdom of your glory that with all your, your people in every time and place, we praise and worship you forever. We offer this through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Heavenly Father, now and forever. Amen. And we pray together as Jesus taught his disciples, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The bread we break is a sharing in the new life that Jesus, Jesus brings with his, life, his death and resurrection. The cup we take, a sharing in the, new, in the, in the blood of Christ shared to bring us fullness of life, the gifts of God for the people of God.
I invite you as you are as you are at home to take the bread if you have some with you and to eat the body of Christ. body of Christ given to you. I invite you at home, if you have these elements available, to take the cup and to drink the blood of Christ. Let us pray. Good shepherd of the sheep, through your life, we have life. Through your gift of new life, we have hope. Through the gift of this bread and wine, this communion, we have unity with you and one another, the fullness of life which you want for all your people. May we, in our gratitude, share your love with the world. In your name, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Our final hymn this morning is Christ Be My Leader, 624. Um, and here we go, 624. <laughs> So go out from this place in peace. Okay, maybe don't go out. 
maybe stay home, but reach out in the ways that you can in peace to share the love of God with the world, to follow Christ, our good shepherd, to know that even in our suffering, undeserved or deserved, that Christ is there with us. And when we advocate for those who suffer unjustly, we are doing the work of our shepherd. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And let us sing our blessing to one another. May the grace of Christ our Saviour.